I got a white mark right here for how deep I wanted to go with this auger. And you can see this red oak fighting back. I've got all four of my legs cut out and they're 32 inches. It gives me a couple inches for inside the stump and then 30 inches high which is right at you know waist level for me a little bit below that we'll get the bark off this thing and that's not going to be very difficult to do i left it on there right now but we can get that bark off of there pretty easy with our axe just like that we could also draw knife this bark off of here it's pretty easy just to peel it off just like this It'll come off in strips, probably. Not a big deal. So, we've got that chore yet to do to get this off. Got that lifted up, it's coming off in a bigger sheet, and right here's our hole. And this is where we're going to fit this leg up to. So let's just kind of test fit that. Okay, that's a two inch hole, a two inch hickory leg. So that's going to be pretty good, and you can see that it's splayed out this direction and just a little bit this direction from center line of the log this being the bottom, like this. And when we get ready to bore the next hole, we'll use this leg as a guideline for our auger for the angles that we want to get to drill the next hole. Okay, so we've got our bark removed and we've got one leg in place. And now, what we're going to do is lay that thing the way it's going to sit. And we'll just eyeball the angle back and out for the next augered hole. Okay, so now we've got the legs in, but we've got a little bit more splay in the back than the front, which that's not a big deal. What I got to fix is I'm also not the same length because of the splay. So these legs will have to be cut off shorter in order to make this level. So let's get that done. Then we'll talk more about what we're going to do up here on top. Okay, now I'm going to show you a real easy way to figure out how much we need to cut off these legs that are uneven. I'm going to take my axe and I'm just going to come in on this end of the end grain down here and pound a small split in there. I'm going to be doing some cutaway stuff over here anyway. So that split's not going to make a difference later. And I'm doing this on the high side. And I'm putting a knot of string right in there. Now what I want to do is I want to lift this string up and get it level. What looks like a straight line. If I had a level, I could lay a level on there. Then I'm just going to take a measuring device and measure the difference right here at the legs. And it's two inches. So if I cut two inches off these longer legs, it should be level again. Alright, so just eyeball it. I'd say that's real close. Might still be just a little high on this side. That's not going to make that much of a difference. I've got one side of it kind of in dirt and one side on gravel, so that could be making a difference too. I'm not that worried about it being perfect, as long as it's fairly flat. Now, the reason for this type bench, and Roy Underhill called this a clave. If you look up clave on the internet, you're going to find a musical instrument. I cannot find any reference to this being called a clave other than from Roy Underhill. But I also looked up clave with a TH instead of a VE thinking that I might have misheard what he said, but I'm pretty sure he said clave. But I've seen this type bench used on a lot of bodging and European UK woodworking sites as well. And it's an old world type bench. And 
a hacking stock, which was just a stump turned on end, and we've used that in lots and lots of videos, exposes the end grain of your lumber so that when your axe comes down, it separates the end grain and it can stick in the end grain of the log. When you turn the log the opposite direction, you now have the long grain going this way, so you're trying to cut across the grain. And then especially hardwoods like red oak and things like that that are long fibrous woods, when you go to drop your axe on it, it's more than likely going to bounce off instead of sticking in, which is going to save you time and energy when you're doing lots and lots of work, carving things with an axe and roughing out blanks with an axe because you're going to be hitting this wood and kind of bouncing instead of having to pull it up every time. It's almost like an anvil. It's coming down and coming up, coming down and coming up. It's not sticking into the material. So that's part of the advantage of this. The other advantage of this was that you could turn it into a vise very easily and you could also cut off an end section of it so that you could hold stock against it while you're working. And I think accidentally with the legs being splayed more at the back than the front or more at the front than the back depending on which way you turn the bench, it's kind of advantageous for me to actually put the cutout end on the front as far as the end cut goes and then we'll put our vice portion in the center. Alright, we're going to remove some material from this log now. and. I want a section in the middle about a foot wide so that I can put a bowl in here if I want to work it or a large container. And then I want about a five inch step in this thing in the front that I can put material against as well. We'll talk about that a little bit later. So for the time being, we're going to cut down here about halfway through the material, here and here about halfway through the material and remove that from the bench. Okay, so once we've got our saw curves cut in, now we need to remove this material and this material to create our stop here and our vise here. Okay, so at this point we're really just kind of in a hewing mode and we can come back in here and use our mallet and get a lot of control with our broad axe. get that bed cleaned up real good. Now when we get ready to take the end off of this thing, here where our shelf's going to be, this is where our pro comes in. You see how that acts like a lever coming down on there. And we'll just take a little bit of out at a time. Going into end grain of red oak, you're going to have to take small bites at a time. But this is what a pro is classic for. You can see those shingle type splits that's taken off of that wood. And then you can just lever it, pop it right off. Okay, so I want to show you a little different hatchet here. And this is actually a hewing hatchet. This hatchet is beveled only on one side and flat on the other like a chisel grind. And what that does is it will not dig into the wood as bad as the double bevel does when you're trying to hew something off or make a straight flat edge on it. And these heads are generally reversible. This one's set up and handled for it to be left-handed for me. But you can use that axe on the face of something like this 
and it won't dig in as bad because of that flat face. It lifts it up more like a chisel. And you can walk through here and use that thing very much like a chisel if you didn't have one. Okay, so the other method that you can do with this is I've made a series of saw cuts in here to get my bed a little bit deeper where I want. And I can come in here with a timber framing chisel. And timber framing chisels are just large, heavy duty chisels that are made for timbering. And a mallet. And I can come in here where those saw cuts are at, turn my chisel this direction so it's not biting into anything, and just start coming in here and removing those chips. All the way down to the cut line. And now that we have the bed cut out on our bowl vise, we can just turn a bowl blank over, put it inside, put a couple wedges in here. Pound them in and lock that in place and we can work on it now with our ads, we can work on it with our gouges and things like that, our knives, and not have to worry about moving around. We can walk all the way around it while we're working. We've got a front end area here that we can lean the material up against to hold it in place while we're doing ads work as well. But the applications for a bench like this are fairly limitless, only limited by your imagination. You could drill this for different types of stops as well if you wanted to to hold smaller work in place of wedges. You can use it to cut material off on just like a normal sawhorse. It's about the size of a normal sawhorse, it's just a little wider. But it's a good project that is very adaptable to a woodland environment because it can be built with very simple tools. An auger, a saw, and an axe can build this bench. Other tools will make the job easier and it's better to have the right tool for the right job if you have the right tool. But if you don't have the right tool and all you've got are three or four main tools with you, you can still get this job done in a woodland environment. That's what's important about these green woodworking videos is that most of them are adaptable to a woodland environment. So they are bushcraft type videos about green woodwork. Well, guys, I appreciate you joining me out here today for this video on the bull vice or what Roy Underhill referred to as the clave. I appreciate your views and your support. I thank you for everything you do for our school, for our family, for our business, for all of our sponsors, instructors, affiliates, and friends. Don't forget to watch my new series on National Geographic tomorrow night at 10 o'clock, Dirty Rotten Survival.